In this presentation, I'm going to try to distinguish between phones, allophones, and phonemes. I think these terms are often confusing for my students, particularly the concept of allophones. So first, let's start by defining phones. A phone is the smallest phonetic unit uncovered through segmentation of a spoken language. Now you're familiar with the word phone, especially as in telephone, and in that case, the word seems to have a slightly different meaning, right? But tele refers to distant and phone to sound. So, phone meaning sound. In phonetics, phone is the smallest phonetic unit, the smallest sound of speech that's uncovered through the segmentation of the spoken language. Ph phones are represented in phonetics inside of brackets. So when you see something inside of brackets in phonetics, what is being shown is the exact representation of the sounds as spoken, or at least as exact as the phonetician is able to render them. Now let's next let's define phoneme. Phonemes are sound differences that distinguish words. Um, so if a phone is a sound, a phoneme would be a meaning distinguishing sound. Uh, for example, in English, the uh, phoneme uh, k in kill or skill or circle, um, we could represent this as the phoneme uh, represented by the letter K. Now, in, some, in the word keep, there's a little bit of air that comes out after the phoneme represented by the letter K. If I pronounced it without the air coming out, without the aspiration, keep, it wouldn't make a difference in the meaning of the word. The difference between keep and keep isn't a significant difference. It doesn't make a difference in meaning. There is no other word in English which is made with an unaspirated k sound, there, and thereby signifying a different word. I hope that hasn't, isn't too confusing. The important thing is that a pho the phoneme uh, could be pronounced in slightly different ways, but that doesn't create a difference in meaning. So, phonemes are sound differences that distinguish words. Each language varies in its phonemes. The phonemes of any language are a subset of all the possible sounds that a human mouth could make. In other words, each language uses a different set of sounds, phones, to make meaning with, and these are the language's phonemes. Phones are represented between slashes. So when you see something written between slashes, what is being said is that these are the meaningful sounds produced. Slight differences in sound that don't change the meaning are not being taken into account here. Now finally, this brings us to allophones. Allophones are sounds that are perceptibly different, but do not distinguish words. And I'm going to be spending most of the rest of this time talking about allophones. Allophones are a closely related set of speech sounds or phones. And one phoneme could have several allophones. So, uh, I mentioned that in the word, uh, that the phoneme represented by the letter K could be pronounced sometimes with air coming out after it, a little aspiration, a little extra breath coming out after the, after the stop, after it's released or it could be pronounced without that air coming out after it, without the aspiration, as it is in the word skill. So the, the, the phoneme represented by the letter K in the words kill and skill may be slightly different, a slightly different sound, a slightly different phone, but it's still the same phoneme. Okay, still confused. Starting from the bottom of this diagram, you can see these symbols that represent all sorts of different sounds that can occur in languages. These are phones. The middle line shows the sounds that can represent the phoneme uh, represented by the letter T. Let's just call it the phoneme T. You can use these sounds in the place of the phoneme T. So you can say butter as butter or as butter or as butter, or, um, which one haven't we done? Butter. All of the sounds in the middle line are allophones of the phoneme T.
Okay. Still confused? Okay, I don't want to confuse you any further with this example. I hope I don't confuse you any further with this example, but think of the character James Bond. When you watch a movie starring, I don't know, whoever is currently playing 007, you'll see this one actor playing the character James Bond most of the time. And you may come to think of that character, is, or that actor, as being James Bond. But at other points in the movie, you'll actually be watching a stuntman playing James Bond. If there's a scene in which James Bond is in the shower, you might actually be watching a body double playing James Bond. The stuntman, the body double, and the actor never appear in the movie at the same time, but they all represent James Bond at some point. So just as these three people can stand in for the same character, the allophones, the three, di three different allophones can stand in for the same phoneme. So look at the different ways in which, which the word little can be pronounced. If I said any of these words, you would accept it as being a possible way of saying little. Not all of them might be common in your pronunciation, but you'd accept them as being uh, appropriate renderings of that word. So I could say little, or little, or even little. And you would accept them all as being... Uh, as being representations of the word little. You see the, in square brackets on the left, you see three different allophones for the uh, phonemic representation on the right. Why does this matter? I think it's important for second language teachers to have a sense of this, because learners of a language need to learn to recognize the various phones as allophones of the same phoneme. So teachers need to know how to present phonemes in various positions in a word, and to ensure that all allophones have been covered. Or at least teachers need to have an accepting attitude towards different allophones representing the same phoneme. They should also recognize that sometimes different allophones are used depending on where the sound occurs in the word. Uh, just as I said the letter, the, the, the phoneme represented by the letter K sounds differently when it comes after, uh, an, or in a consonant cluster, than when it comes right at the beginning of the word. So it sounds different in the word skill than it does in the word kill. The, uh, the teacher needs to be prepared to teach different sounds in different parts of the word. So you should be teaching each sound in the word initial position, when the sound comes at the beginning of the word, when it comes at the beginning of a cluster, or in a cluster at the beginning of a word, when it comes between two vowels in the intervocalic position, or when it comes at the end of the word in this word final position. So. Here are a few exercises to test yourself. You might want to pause this and try to write down your answers. Are L and R different phonemes in English? And don't just tell me yes or no, but think about why they are or aren't. Give two allophones for the phoneme T. Give two allophones for the phoneme K. Give two allophones for the phoneme can you give an example of phones that in another language are allophones of the same phoneme, but in English are different phonemes? So there's five exercises. The last two, I think, are the hardest ones. Thanks again, and here are my references.